you're watching Khan Vision podcast interview by your host Muttaki Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Khan Vision. We haven't been doing English podcast for a while, but you know, we figured out with with our guests that maybe it's better if we talk about cybersecurity in English because a lot of the terminology are more clear. They make more sense in English than in Finnish. So without ado, let's go to my guest. Today we have here uh, Johannes. I forgot your last name. Uh, Antuk. Antuk. He's a cool guy. We uh, we met maybe a month ago. Two, almost, almost two months ago. Almost two months. Yeah. Time goes really fast. <laughs> And we planned like two or three times already to make a podcast, but... He's a busy guy and he does a lot of stuff. <clears throat> so maybe later we can uh, hear more about your hobbies and stuff. So he rows, he's a very athletic guy and he studies IT. And uh, we we met through a place and we connected I- immediately. So, and I was like, wow, this guy is a smart guy. You know, I need to have him on podcast because I think I learned a lot from you. Every time I have, um, t- yeah, there's many instances where I just learned from you. So that's, then I was like thinking that this knowledge is so important and valuable that we could share this with, with other people and they might benefit from there as well. Yeah. So this is the story how we came about here to make this podcast. So we are talking about privacy, right? And data overall. What kind of information you can find out about someone just using the Google Chrome? Just, just by uh, searching on the internet. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can actually legally, like, bear in mind, it's not even illegal to mm-hmm. search information about someone. Depends on the person, on how public they've been with the information. You can find out easily where they live, what's their name, about their family, their daughters, And their daily their daily activities, yeah. and uh, if you think about it, then in the end it is kind of creepy, mm. like how much data we share and how little privacy we have left. Yeah, we are basically, for example, on Instagram you see a lot of people who daily post about what they do and whatsoever. So the the story that we're talking about now, Instagram stories, for example. Uh, for example, Instagram stories, but yeah, overall the also. The posts, you know, mm. Instagram uh, posts. Like, uh, if someone were to look at their posts on daily basis, mm. like <clears throat> your account might be private. Yes, but uh, there might be some person who you've accepted. You never know who it is. Yeah, and they keep looking at your pictures. They keep somewhat uh, learning to know you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a lot. Uh, is there a lot of people like that? Is there like companies like that? They they create fake fake accounts and they just want to see what people are doing and gather well, some information. I heard something about in Joe Rogan's podcast. And there is like this uh, Rus- Russian, some uh, yeah Russian tro- troll farms. They call it. Mm. They go and troll people and, and yeah. Well, trolls. Well, that's a whole different story, you know. Yeah. Trolls are all over the world. Yeah, and there are actually a lot of uh, groups. Uh, for example, a hacker group called the Ludsec. Okay. It is actually it did highly illegal stuff. Okay, but it did it mostly for just as the name says, Ludsec. So mm. they just uh, did it to troll people and fuck mm. around with them, you know. Mm. But in the end, what they did is illegal. Yeah. But you can also troll. Uh, just to, for example, you go on a forum or mm. Facebook. You know, it just someone says something, and uh, you just troll everything. Yeah. You say you completely throw it at them and take it irritated, but mm. you laugh at it. So mm. that's basically just tro- trolling. I think about people posting posts, like writing stuff about, like tweeting or you know making yeah. a fake Facebook post with a picture. You can get so much information, uh, not just the text, a picture, maybe a location, and then on top of that, if you keep posting those stories, you know, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, then you can actually update people 
very quickly about where you are. So if someone wants to find you, they can find you. Yeah. They say like, okay, two minutes ago he was here. And maybe if you share like, oh, I'm going to this store, then someone can find the store yeah. and, and follow you and do something harmful, potentially. Well, you know, it's the thing is that uh, the potential is something to happen like that. Yeah. It's really small, right? Yeah. But at the same time, there still is a small chance that it might happen. And the fact is, we are basically giving away our own privacy and freedom. Yeah. And people are making a business out of it or abusing yeah. it otherwise. So what do you think? What is a good measurement, security measurement? Like, what can we do on a, in a daily basis to prevent these kind of things from happening? Is there is there a safe way of using the social media that without? Yeah. Well, for a fact, I, it all depends on a person. But uh, one thing you could do: don't share location all the time. Mm. Don't let everyone know where you are at the, at times. You know, for example, if you're at uh, at some old neighborhood, for example, you post, "Oh, you're there." And someone finds out, oh, hey, you're there. And who knows what might happen. Yeah, they so, might rob you. They might do something harmful. Yeah, well, the thing is, yeah, it's all your choice. Share location, share pictures. You know, no one's restricting you. But at the same time, you got to think twice before you post something. Mm. So, mm. like, so location sharing. Yeah, that's that's something that I... Well, before I was more, you know, critical about that, like I didn't share. But nowadays, if I go, especially if I go to a foreign country and I just want to share like yeah. hashtag, hashtag Rome, hashtag New York or something like that, yeah. then people can find you in a Rome potentially. But there is a lot of people. <laughs> but yeah. then I go to a more like a quiet place where there are maybe 500 people, you know. And it's then there's like one shop and everyone hangs around in the mall. It's easier to find someone there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, hey, same thing actually with that uh, with the location. Mm. You could even sit at home, post some old pictures you took, for example, in Rome, yeah. and tag his location as Rome. And yeah. No one knows that where you actually are. So it's you know it's a double edged sword. You could say like that. Mm. On one hand, it's really nice, but on the other hand, it's potentially dangerous. But at the same time. What is not dangerous? Harmful. Yeah. yeah, we do a lot of decisions in our life which are harmful, like yeah. eating, you know, bag of chips. That's harmful for your health. But this is like harmful in a different way. It's talking about people's life and secrets, I guess. So we put data in into the internet, and some of those data are not meant for everyone. And then what's uh, that's when the problem comes so you know i heard from someone that you know like this big cybersecurity companies ceo or or head of the tech kind of said like i would never have a facebook account or make a facebook account like elon musk doesn't have facebook account right yeah well thing is you make an account and you already just by making an account, you already share a lot of your own personal details. Mm. So you share the details not just to the people that are using the social media, but to the company itself. Mm. And about the data you share to the company, most of the time you don't even know exactly what you share. Like for example, let's take Google. Mm. You know, do you know that Google actually stores all the data about your like location histories and even your payments you made through Google, you know, it stores mm. that. You might not need that information yourself or whatsoever, but mm. at the same time, it's somewhere out there. Yeah. So it's almost like, you know, if we talk about the reality, you know, whatever we do, it leaves a mark. But yeah. now we are like leaving up like a pile of marks yeah. in one container. And then yeah. you can like, oh... You like to eat potatoes or you yeah, like to... For example, yeah. Yeah, or if you do something shady, you like to, you know, do some shady stuff, like, which other people might not want... Like, you wouldn't want other people to know about you. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, let's say, for example, again, you make some purchases on, 
for example, Amazon. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure through what it collects data, yeah. but uh, it does collect some small amount of data. Mm. Not sure either if it's via, you have to be logged in mm. to Google when you make those purchases or if Google actually shares and buys data about people from other companies. Yeah. Because some companies actually do that. Mm. And I don't want this to be about like Google being the big bad guy or whatever. Yeah. You know, Google is actually really good. Mm. And now imagine the internet without Google. Yeah. Yeah. Internet is pretty much Google. You could like that's basically... that's the first thing I do when I like have a browser. First I type Google like automatically without even yeah. thinking where I want to go. Yeah. And yeah, but it makes your life easier as well. Yeah. Google makes your life easier. You don't have to call someone to get any information. You can just yeah. Google it out. <laughs> like uh, I was actually just writing, you know, the essay I told you about. Yeah. So I brought up there the internet um Cons, good. cons and pros. Yeah, like the cons and pros, kind of, I guess. Mm. The pro is, for example, let's say you're living in 1800s. Yeah. And you want to know what's going on in Asia. Yeah. Well, how are you going to find that out? You have to go there yourself. Mm. That's pretty much the only way to know that. Mm. Nowadays, open up internet, go Google. Yeah. What's happening there? Yeah, you read news, everything. You see bloggers, you see YouTubers, yeah. you know, talking about some issues or showing what kind of food they eat yeah. and documentaries, and you know, you get to choose what kind of information you want. Do you want a documentary type of information? Do you want just a fact, or yeah, or you just want some general gibberish? Yeah, yeah. What 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 do you do in Google? Uh, do you, you use a lot of? Uh, sorry, YouTube. I was thinking. YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Um, what kind of information do you look for in YouTube? Usually, it's uh, how to something. You know, well, I'm, yeah. When I'm not sure how to do something specifically, mm. then I use Google and YouTube for that. Yeah. But bear in mind, also, I personally have shifted a lot towards DuckDuckGo instead mm. of Google. Because uh, Google, it does give you a little bit personalized search results. Yeah. And it kind of manipulates them. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. Like, like according this, yeah. according to who is paying for them the most, yeah, right? Well, don't take it wrongly. Yeah. But, uh, they, they don't uh, manipulate it all the time. But yeah. But some little searches and results, they might differ. Yeah. But for example, DuckDuckGo, they don't keep any uh, tracking data. They don't manipulate anything they just give you the same straight up search results from the internet and okay. it's one of the uh, one of the safest uh, browser no 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 not browser but like the search engine yeah search engines yeah yeah that's that's the word so um doctor go yeah doctor go uh, tell me more about that i i think i heard from you 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 mentioned doctor go before we were talking not today but like previously yeah. so uh how did how did you know about this and is it what kind of company it is or well who is behind this basically um to be honest and i can't remember right now is it an open source yeah. like plat you know open source code i'm not sure yeah. if it's fully open source okay. but it is more open than google that's okay. for sure yeah and and google is pretty open compared to like Apple, Apple for yeah, yeah. Apple. apple is like i have a macbook they're nice to make media but they just they take all your privacy like yeah. you <laughs> but hey anything in that device is theirs almost yeah. but hey also consider the fact that uh, for example apple and google yeah they have like android and ios mm -hmm. and both of them are actually built upon the same framework which is uh, unix yeah so just one of them uses more of the linux side and the other is well fully enclosed mm. you don't know what's happening there mm and the google side it's a bit more open yeah like imagine how powerful these mobile devices have become you can basically use your mobile device like a computer like it a is, computer it's actually browser like a small computer yeah yeah it's a computer in your pocket like imagine in the 50s you know yeah. a computer it's it fills a whole room yeah nowadays yeah. well boom here's your computer yeah and, and the nicest thing about technology is like even the worst one evolves. So like 
a year ago, l let's say 10 years ago, a mobile, you, if you pay 300 euros for a mobile, you get like a certain technology. But yeah. now if you pay 300 euro for the mobile, you get like so much different technology, yeah, can, like touch can, screen and the cameras are much better, face recognition, you yeah, know, I mean, fingerprint. Like you, can, you can choose freely whatever you want. Yeah. Even just for $300. Like face recognition, that's like... It was crazy when you when the mobile devices started to have the fingerprint thing. That's we were like, wow. Yeah, and the and, man, and yeah. then it went to the face recognition, which is even more mind boggling. But also bear in mind, the Samsung they used up until I believe S nine mm. could be I could be wrong. They used the iris scanner, so instead of face, they used your eyes. Okay. And uh, iPhone. X was it? Yeah, iPhone X used your uh, face as a 3D scanner. Yeah. So then again, a lot of mobiles that use face recognition, they just use the basic camera they have in there. They just look at, oh hey, it's a familiar face. Okay, I'll open it up. Yeah. And uh, then again, with the uh, iPhone X's mm. uh, face recognition, it was sending sort of like infrared 3D. Wow. Just, 3D stuff in your face to recognize it's you. Mm. And again, Samsung, it looked at your eye and mm. your eye color and your iris. Mm. So it's a lot, a lot of different types of them. But I could say that right now the best face recognition is actually on iPhone X. The iPhone 10 has the best face recognition yeah. because of the 3D technology. Wow. But you also pay so much more yeah. for that, you know, I like, do. of course, they're using better components because you're paying like, you can buy like a laptop, like a decent laptop with that money. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And for that money, you can buy like two or even three mm. Android phones. Yeah, like and pretty good Android yeah, phones. Yeah, pretty good. For yeah. example, mine, the OnePlus 5T, which I have, I yeah. paid 400 euros for that. 400 euros. 400 euros. Yeah. I paid uh, for Nexus 6P as well, 400. Yeah. And they're actually really good phones. Yeah. Like, there's not really much to say bad about them. Yeah. And uh, for example, with OnePlus, mm. if I remember correctly, then even their first phone, which came out like almost five years ago, yeah. six years ago, even that is still getting updates, regular updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still like think that because Apple only has App Store and you you only use App Store through Apple device, the updates are more precise. They use the camera in a better way than in Androids, would you say? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. But also, uh, the App Store is not the best store. Best store there is. There are a lot of reasons why, for example, uh, the Play Store is better. Mm -hmm. And one of them comes with the Spotify, which I actually told you about some few weeks ago, I think. Yeah. About how the App Store takes a large percentage of the money mm. out of people's pocket when Spotify asks for premium. Mm. That is because Apple has their own Apple Music for which they don't have any kind of limitations or stuff like that as yeah. they have for Spotify. Yeah, and Apple Music was uh, much older than Spotify. I still remember when people started to use like iPods and, and whatnot. But then Spotify kind of took over the music yeah. business. So before Apple Music, you know, people were downloading like tracks. Nobody was paying for, like yeah. even a normal person wasn't paying for music. So Apple brought that back that people are paying for music because you get that device into, you know, you can. So when you buy something, you get it on your different devices as well. Right. Yeah. So that was the convenience of that. But then Spotify revolutionize that because you could play it on your computer mac or you know any kind of PlayStation, device station whatever like any yeah. device even most cars nowadays they are built in spotify yeah hey we will continue on this topic in the next clip so as we we're saying mm. spotify it revolutionized the music industry and you can use it on large scale basically any device nowadays yeah, so I think that's one of the key success in our journey in our, of the technology that the more they can talk to each other, the more relevant they become. Yeah. Before, it used to be like that. You know, if you have Samsung phone, it didn't like 
go with the Nokia phone, you know, like before the smartphones. They Everyone did their own thing. Yeah. And then internet is like this technology that everyone is using, like a standard. And and like Spotify is doing the same thing that it's bringing a standard to lis- to the listening experience. And yeah. they're like focusing on just on just that app. Uh, but, hey, also, a lot of people are saying that Spotify, you know, you just listen to free music there. You don't pay for the uh, for the music industry itself, like for the uh, artists and stuff. Same time, people use Google mm. and uh, YouTube just like that. As, like YouTube, do people pay for artists yeah. when they just upload something? Nowadays, yeah, with the copyrights and everything. But before, nope, not really that much. People are just sharing free music, like yeah. free. That that's a crazy topic overall with the whole copyright thing. Yeah. And there is a lot of people who think that the copyright laws are not just what do you think about them no they're not uh, as just as they could be okay but at the same time what could be that much different mm. copyrights were made so that uh, the author gets all the revenue yeah that's why they were made but nowadays they have taken it to like extreme standards yeah i think the problem is as well so, because before People used to like, if I steal a watch from you, I'm taking something physical. Yeah. But if I steal an idea from you, it's not physical. It's like abstract. And softwares, these things are like abstracts. Yeah. Like, uh, see, the thing also is, it depends, for example, how much your product costs, you know? Mm. If it's, uh, if you already give it out for free, then, Mm. well, not really reason to copyright it. Mm. If you give it out for a fair, fair cost, Okay, mm. I understand you copyright it. For example, if you uh, make a program, yeah. make some software that does, I don't know, for example, something like uh, Photoshop. Yeah. Okay, you make a software like that and uh, you take a small revenue for that. Yeah. Like, let's say $5. Mm. Okay, it's not that much, is it? No. No. Okay, so 10 people, they pay for it and everything. So you get 50 bucks already. Yeah. Then someone uh, distributes it for free yeah. to another 90, per, uh, 90 people. Mm. So instead of getting all that money, mm. you get only 50 bucks. Yeah. So you need, there is a, a thin line between copyrights and piracy and what is actually good for the author. Because thing also is, if someone shares it for free... And gives it out, then a lot more people will know about it. True. And uh, some people, they actually do. If they find something really good, like for example, a program mm. or let's say a game that they download for free mm. and they think it's good, mm. they just wanted to try it out before they buy it. And they find out it's good, they actually pay the company afterwards. Yeah. I also agree that almost 90% of people don't do that, but there are some people that do. They mm. just take it for free, mm. and if they like it, they pay the author. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I totally agree with you that before... It's, it's a marketing... You know, there are many artists that they have risen because a lot of people kind of downloaded their yeah. music and blasted and then everyone knew about the artist. Yeah. So when this artist comes to the tour to perform, then people come and he shows up yeah. because they know about him. Yeah, people already know about him. Yeah. Like if someone didn't share him, then mm. you get the no fame. One, yeah, almost no one would know about it. But yeah. because someone shared it, even if you lost a lot of revenue, mm. the more people got to know you. Yeah. So it's like 50 50, you know, as I said before, double edged sword. Yeah, man. It's not, it's not that clear we think it to be very clear but you know there's a lot of you know hobbies and and stuff like this like for example if someone gets into ufc you know i i do watch ufc i'm not like super fan but i'm kind of you know i'll watch all the big matches not the small ones because that's an extreme fan when you watch every match but only the big names so um there are a lot of people that they first have to see the match before they start 
to pay for the ESPN yeah. or via, via Play or all these companies to watch the actual match. They just want to have like a clips. For example, you there is a lot of YouTube clips where yeah, you can yeah. watch full matches. Yeah, or the best yeah. moments or the best matches, mo- yeah. the highlights. Yeah, yeah. So when you know, like I personally, first time I saw UFC is from use uh, YouTube. You know. And then, you know, my friends, they have via play, so we might go to their place and just watch a match or re- re-watch a match because those the matches are like four in the morning, you know? <laughs> like, it's it's really annoying because yeah. of the time. Yeah, the time zones, they sometimes are a big pain in the arse. Yeah, that's I mean, for sure. I, I remember the, the match between Khabib and Conor McGregor. Like, I was so close to stay, uh, to, to stay awake, like I went to sleep early, but still, like four, four or five, five in the morning. You know, you don't, you don't have the energy to wait and you know wake yeah. up. You need to be a crazy fan. I mean, it's a, like a lot of uh, ice hockey around here. You know, yeah. Finland, they are a big, big fans of ice hockey. That's yeah. for sure. A- NHL. Yeah, NHL indeed, and uh, KHL as well. Yeah, the, KH- Russian league, the, Russian the Russian league. league. But the fact is, the NHL. Uh, a lot of their games are in so different time zone that mm. when they play, it's already almost nighttime, or it actually is nighttime over here. So yeah. it's the same with the UFC, huh? Eh? Mm. But yeah, we came to this point that <laughs> if it wasn't the YouTube, I wouldn't be exposed to that knowledge. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't even know. So the information spread, it's a huge factor in companies or, yeah, especially in companies, because if you don't know the company if you don't know the product then how can you buy it in order to buy something you need to know about it yeah and uh for example let's say games yeah back in the day a lot of companies used to make free demos of Mm. the games nowadays they don't really make that many there are only a few games and companies who have free demos those who are new ones you know yeah the new companies but I think, but you know, for example... Day, it doesn't yeah. actually matter if you're a new company or an old company. If you make a new game, then no one actually knows what's it going to be. Yeah. But I think, you know, for example, nowadays, if you buy an Xbox One, they give you, like, Halo with it, you know, the game. Which, but, like, obviously, they won't give it right away, but they'll give when Halo is, like, one year old or two years old, you know. It's not like a new game. You wouldn't go and buy it, like, brand new. You yeah. would probably like I buy a lot of secondhand games because I don't play that much. So I just play socially, you know, like I'm a big fan of Halo. So when I bought, you know, bought uh, Xbox, I, w- I bought it secondhand because I just paid 15 euros for that. And and when the first guy bought it, he pay- probably paid like 80 or 90 euros for that game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I myself, I have a PlayStation 4 at yeah. home. And uh, you have to have the PlayStation subscription. Yeah, or uh, account in the... PlayStation Plus subscription yeah. to play online. <clears throat> okay, so you uh, need to have like an account in there. Well, of course, yeah, account. Yeah. But uh, the fact is you also have to pay to play online. Yeah, yeah. Which before you, it wasn't like yeah, that. Yeah, you didn't have to do it with PlayStation 3. But mm. before you have to pay. It, you know, it kind of sucks. But at the same time, mm. uh, also you have the subscription. Mm. They also do give out games to people with subscription. Mm. For example, just uh, it's not the last month, but like a couple of months ago, mm. for example, they gave out the Steep, mm. you know, the snowboarding game. Okay. And, you know, on one hand, yeah, you have to pay to play online. But at the other hand, they give out stuff. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, PlayStation, I was so proud of PlayStation 3, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a like big fan of Xbox because of some of the games. So I like Halo. I'm a big fan of Halo. And then there was this game called Fable. You know Fable. Yeah, that was good. The first one, but the, the second <laughs> one was let's so. Let's not talk about. Yeah, let's one. not. Or the third one. You know, all of. Yeah. Like, how can you make a game? that the next version is so much more worse than the first one. They didn't think this whole thing true. But anyway, when anyone, one of, uh, when any of the parents of some kids would ask me, like, hey, which console to buy? I was like, look, I like Xbox because of certain games. But if you didn't have those games, if you didn't know, then buy it. 
PlayStation. You know, you can play it online for free. You know, like you might like before PlayStation Four. Yeah, yeah, the PlayStation Three, basically. Yeah. You know, and it it was like it got a lot of people into the gaming. Because maybe they would never pay for it, but they tried online and they're like, damn, this is so much better. And they switched to that. And, but, but then again, I also understand that the more people pay for that, the more people they can get behind the tech to develop that. Because that's not free, you know, all the, all the servers and, you know, engineers who are creating new maps and uploading them. So that's kind of win win. I guess. I mean, could kind of, yeah. But they get so much money anyway from people. That's the other argument, I guess. Well, at the same hand, like, if people didn't know about it, yeah, then they wouldn't pay for it. Yeah, yeah. If it spreads out like a wildfire, more yeah. people will know about it. More people will eventually start paying for it, which will also increase your profit. That is true. That is true. All the marketing strategies and, you know. I mean, another argument is for that, that, you know, people just want things for free and not work for that. So that's a valid argument as well. Should we give things for people without earning it? People will abuse things that they don't earn. Hmm. Well, this is like a philosophical question. I'm not just talking about tech. Yeah, well, the thing is... For example, if you give something free, well, someone did still do the work for that thing to be there. Yeah. So for example, some game, you know, someone gives it for free, but then again, the developers, they put in their time and effort to make that game. So mm. who pays them? Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's like a road. So you yeah. pay, you, it's, you it's made like it a, for your car, but all the other people is using yeah, it as well. It's, uh, <laughs> like a domino effect you could call i guess yeah but but i think we have the similar kind of problem with with property like some people think in you know f- very rightish country like usa where people are very liberal liberal or conservative i don't know but you know where some people think that people should own streets and you could buy a street and and whoever <laughs> uses your street you know, you has to pay to, yeah, tax, they have tax, to pay tax yeah. road tax and all stuff. Yeah, this that's crazy. crazy yeah. That's crazy, man. But but it does have like a point in there. If you own something, if I own this table, then you can't come and just eat here because I pay for it. Yeah. But like on the <laughs> other hand, why would you? Why would you? Mm. You know, for example, in a, <laughs> on the street out there, do you pay to drive there? But, no, but you pay to use the car. We have a different kind of cultural understanding on this issue. I'm not saying you and me, mm. but for example, when you go to Bangladesh, you know, my parents are from there. So if I like watch YouTube video on my phone, to me, that's very private. It's only me, you know, unless I want to show you that what, what I'm watching. But my cousins and everyone, they'll just come over me and you know, all the kids from here and there. And they'll start to watch whatever you are watching. Because they feel that, you know, like back in the days, we used to have like a computer in house. Yep, and we had as well. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, everyone kind of watches what you're doing. Yeah, so they think like it's not yours. It everyone's. It's everyone. Everyone shares it. In some cultures, you know, like the cell phone is like everyone's. You know, it's not like one person. It's like the mom just only calls to to the dad. Yeah. But the kids, they watch YouTube with that. And some other one is using that for gaming and whatnot. So, you know, like, it, it's just weird. So in the similar way, the way we t- talk about the roads and we were like, oh, this is so crazy. How can you use this like that? But, you know, who told you what is right? How the road should be used? How they should be taxed? Or should they even be taxed? Have you thought about that? No, haven't we thought about that? Haven't we had a reason to think about that? <laughs> yeah, but you do think about privacy and whatnot. So what about these uh, companies like McAfee and F-Secure, you know, that people buy? Are they really useful? What do you think? Well, I could actually say that nowadays, uh, if you know what you do on the internet, 
if you don't download every single thing like, that you see yeah every single button you see download now download download if you don't press those and whatever you know you don't go to sketchy websites you mm-hmm. know kind of what you're doing you can easily manage with the uh microsoft's own antivirus mm. they might the uh microsoft uh, sorry windows defender yeah it's actually it used to be really crappy but mm. nowadays it actually does its work you don't need any actual antivirus and uh, remember at work there was this one computer mm. that they brought in for us mm. and it had five different antiviruses and the customer said like it's so slow and nothing works and mm. i think i have a virus well we ended up just removing every single antivirus and it started working yeah because the antiviruses they fight each other yeah, pretty much because they somewhat they detect each other as viruses because you know. they have like a different kind of rights over the computer yeah. the antiviruses they can get to different levels and and check the system so you know to find another program that does that you know yeah. they kind of start to fight like why you're here bro you shouldn't pretty be much. here bro just leave before i delete you uh that's crazy yeah, yeah. but but I guess, you know, it's hard for me to imagine that there are people who will press like things like, hey, press this and you'll get 1 million euros. But then again, there are people who do that. It's, as Sue said, it's hard to imagine, but there are people that do it. Mm. Like, I can't imagine a person who goes like on the internet and he's like, oh, download this, you win free iPhone. Well, we all talked about, like, thought about this. When we see that kind of button, we're like, should I? Yeah. Um, like, like you, when, know, you know, deep inside, you're like, should I do it? But then again, you know that you're never going to, it's like, it's never going to happen. It's just a full on scam for you to catch your information or whatever, you know, some viruses. That is true. Like, the first time you see that, because we all been in that room <laughs> where, you know, the first time it says like, hey. Do you want an iPhone? And you're like, hmm. Maybe the universe is trying to send an iPhone to me. Or maybe (laughs) this is just too good to be true, you know. But this thought. And maybe, you know, the first time you... you, Like, when you don't know what is real and not real. Yeah. Then you can't really tell. Because you don't have any information where you can compare it to. Yeah. So that's why we call experience. That's Even like, if you see something new, you can compare it to your previous encounterments. Yeah, like yeah. so. Let's say like new people on the internet, they don't really know about the social internet culture mm. and so all the ads and everything. They just think, oh, hey, it's here. Oh, let's try it. But and also internet culture. Please be aware, everyone. But the fact is, internet is the place where you can possibly get emotionally hurt because people are really like it's internet is basically like a mask on your face you know you're not yourself anymore there that is so true i mean we could talk about that internet culture that's interesting (laughs) i think people are more mean in internet yeah and one of the reasons for that is on the internet people don't see your real face Mm. they don't know who you are Unless they start searching on you, which we already talked before, it's fully legal. No one restricts uh, someone from searching information about someone because you have already shared it. Mm. The fact is, if someone actually starts hacking into some other company's files or whatever, that's illegal. Mm. That's highly illegal Mm. because they go through someone's own personal defenses and personal information to get to you. But doesn't Google still like protect your information it very does. well yeah, yeah. It, uh, it does protect it really well but at the same time it does also collect a lot of data about you yeah so you know again 50 50 do, do you, you tru- want yeah. it's more like do you trust them yeah do you trust them and do you want them to have that information or it's like when you're going to the barber and they have like a knife and they're like shaving yeah. you and do you trust them <laughs> okay cool if you trust them let him shave you but if you don't trust this guy then don't let him shave <laughs> yeah, you yeah you know? before you're gonna have a knife in your neck like, yeah oh boy that yeah. was the fun trip <laughs> yeah that but was yeah, a quick so, trip so basically the internet privacy uh, as i said you know internet is like a mask on your face you can be anyone who you want for example 
uh, VPNs, that's a big thing you can uh, use. It's uh, via, uh, via VPN, mm. for example, we are here in Finland. And Virtual actually, private network yeah. for anyone who's thinking <laughs> what is VPN. And who doesn't know what VPN, yeah, it's mm. virtual private network that uh, routes your internet traffic through someone else's connection. So yeah. Let's say, for example, right now uh, on my computer, we are connected to the United States, as you can see. Uh, I like to use NordVPN myself. Okay. I really gotten used to it. Is it, um, do you pay? Yeah, it's a paid... I pay for it. So how much is it? Uh, if I remember correctly, then I paid for three years subscription was about like, uh, maybe 70 euros, something like that. Okay. But it was with some discounts. And Does your internet work as fast as anyone else's? Um, it depends. But thing is, uh, NordVPN, for example, they have quite reliable servers mm. and they are fast. They are fast. And they also have different kind of services and mm. servers you can use. For example, you can uh, go straight to USA as we are right now or you could hop uh, through multiple like two servers and you first go to let's say Indonesia and you come out from France so mm. you basically hide your you double hide yourself you put two masks you know mm. let's say someone takes one mask off what you have left another mask so it basically changes your IP address to another IP address where you use your computer through that yeah. okay so it's yeah, it's it's crazy. Man. Internet is actually really interesting, uh, interesting thing yeah. in uh, nowadays daily life. Mm. You now we use it all the time, mm. and it's part of our culture as a civilization. Yeah. If you think yeah. about, it. yeah, it's a way we behave. Yeah, and yeah. it's actually you could say it's part of our evolution. Yeah, it's part of our evolution. We are sharing our thoughts Pretty through. Much, yeah through these things you know like the way i use my lip or or my voice to communicate with you we're using this thing to communicate with another human being and that you know information is powerful just it's it's crazy that we have what we have done and i have heard like elon musk is going to do something neural neural link type of a thing that people could instantly be connected to each other's like to yeah, mind yeah. or something. Well, it's like you know. Again, it's like, do you actually want someone to be connected through your mind? It's like, would no, you would you like me to be in your mind? No, no. Yeah, there's, you know, there's still like some level of privacy we all want. Yeah, it's our own mind. We don't want anyone to get in there. Yeah, it would be weird. Yeah. It would be weird if someone knew hundred percent what you think. And could have zero privacy. But now they have 70% of what I think. They know what I like to eat, where I like to go, and who I'm friends with. Yeah, they know everything <laughs> that you share. Yeah. And even if you uh, so subconsciously share. Yeah. Now that we don't really think about what we share. Yeah. We just we post pictures on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're just like, oh, hey, let's take a picture. We share or mm-hmm. Snapchat, for example, we yeah. share a lot of information. Yeah, that. Snapchat is crazy because, like, I stopped using Snapchat two years ago. One of the reasons is so addictive. It is, and uh, you know, you waste a lot of time in there. And also, I think my phone has become more slower after I used it. And then I realized that they gather a lot of information from you. You know, and and you yeah. can share. Other people can know your Insta, uh, your Snapchat friends might know where you are. That is uh, kind of creepy if well, you let it show. Yeah, it's the map functionality yeah. that it actually does allow you to hide mm. your location. I don't know if it's nowadays, but at some point it was by default the map was on. So when you open up, everyone knew where you were, mm. but uh, you could disable it. Yeah, they realize that people don't want to use that. You know, yeah. it's not for their advantage. People might not use the app because of that. Yeah. If you want to hide from someone, like yeah, I'm sick, you know, calling the work, yeah. oh, I'm sick, and then they see your Snapchat that you're somewhere in the center, just chilling, yeah. having, having <laughs> some Coca Cola and some pasta, some uh, in a nice restaurant or something. I don't yeah, know. Or just going night out uh, with friends. Yeah. And you don't want them to know. Yeah. Have you seen those kind of fail 
fail uh, Facebook posts where people post something and someone else who was not supposed to know that was in the friend list and and did yeah, notice I, I that. I think I've actually seen some of those. Yeah, they're, those they're are fun, so yeah. interesting and and it's just you can just imagine the situation like what how furious the other person is. Yeah, and you're like you don't even think about it mm. when you share it. As you, as I said, like uh, we subconsciously mm. share stuff. Yeah, and we don't think twice. It's yeah, like oh. just to get an uh, attention. Yeah, just to get an attention. That's what we do. Do you think we will like the technology will become part of our body at some point? I do. I do believe. For like example, we become cyborgs and stuff. Um, not straight up cyborgs, but augmentations could in the near future become a big part of our life, our everyday life. Mm. Even nowadays. Uh, some limbs, for example, you mm. know, they are uh, people from war, mm. you know, they have prosthesis and stuff like that. But mm. in the near future, veterans, yeah. yeah, well, they have prosthesis on their legs, for mm. example, yeah. you know, but in the near future, they could become more advanced, they could be nearer linked to your actual body, mm. and uh, you could even, so said, move your, your uh, hand. Yeah, your hand, your fingers. It's mm. actually doable already. Mm. Like, there are some uh, augments that uh, you know it's on your hand and you move it with your mind mm. you think you don't even think about it you don't move it with your do, muscles do, you move it with your mind so think about someone who wants to live safely just have these crazy bodies and just connects through brain he doesn't have to be even a physical being anymore yeah. potentially like if, it, if this technology keeps advancing yeah. then well, uh, yeah, that's crazy. But then again, you know, it does have, you know, it's good sides and it's bad sides. For example, one, the sort of good side, for example, is uh, a door. You know, mm. let's say uh, there's a door with the... Right now, they use the RFID chips with this mm. uh, radio frequency identification. Mm. So, for example, what we use at work, you know, mm. and uh, we just wave it over there by mm. the detector... Mm. and uh, boom the door opens yeah but in the future we could even put those uh, sensors part of our body we could open uh, computers we just put our hand near it it mm. unlocks yeah the doors we just grab it and boom it unlocks yeah and uh, also for example uh, the car keys for example yeah. yeah and also a big uh, thing that i've talked about uh, not talked but thought about mm. is the uh, in-screen fingerprint scanner which has been a big thing mm. recently, like the last year it boomed. And nowadays, for example, already the OnePlus 6 uh, and 6T, you know, last year they came out with the, the fingerprint scanner inside the screen. So you just, uh, you know, you touch the screen and boom, it detects your finger. It's not as fast mm. as the uh, normal fingerprint scanner. Yeah. But the thing also is, it's it might not it might not be the best right now, mm. but for example, let's say uh, in the future, five years after, uh, well, yeah. let's say in the future, you know, mm. there's a keypad, mm. uh, a screen keypad, you put in the numbers, but as you uh, put the numbers in the key code, it also detects your fingerprint. Yeah. So, for example, if someone else goes and puts that exact same code, the code is denied because the fingerprint was different. Mm. So, right now, we might think, like, wait, what the hell? Like, it's mm. not useful at all. Mm. But as technology advances, yeah, it's it gets more useful Yeah, by every year. Yeah. And uh, right now, Samsung, for example, they unveiled their uh, foldable phone. You've yeah. seen that? Yeah. I've seen it, but it's, it's too chunky. Yeah. You know, what do you think about that? What's your thought um, about that? I personally, I don't like it that much, you know. Back in the day, we were thinking like, oh my, the foldable smartphone, like how do you do that? Mm. But at the same time, if I remember correctly, then uh, it was LG, could be. I could yeah. be wrong right now, it was mm. Samsung or LG. They yeah. also have a TV that, it, it's basically just a glass, a panel of glass, and you can see through it. Like uh, yeah, from one side. Yeah, I think it's Samsung or LG. I, yeah. I can't really tell which one is it. Like yeah, from one side, it's like normal screen, but yeah. on the other side, it's like normal glass. Mm. So it's just a glass panel with a screen. Yeah, and there so, was another like a sticker kind of, very like yeah, stickery kind of. That's thing. also yeah. yeah. But like uh, you know, 
right now we might look at it like what the hell it's not useful at all or anything mm. but if you think about it in the future mm. then imagine what it could be used for mm. one of the main things for example the basic window yeah. in a store store window yeah so advertising yeah the advertising right there on the store window from outside you see the adver- ads from the inside you just see a normal glass mm. so or you can see out yeah like for example or different kind of designs if you want to yeah put anyway man it, it has been very nice to talking with you i every time i just think about you know i i, I learn so much through this conversations and man it's these things makes you wonder that are we creating our own monster are we like going to the doom or are we like excelling as a human being because not all the decisions are good you know yeah, like, like atomic like bomb and what this uh, has been the recent years for example the recent 100 years it has been a big big jump in human evolution True. especially when nowadays that the technology it has uh, evolved even more like even faster than humans have evolved True. because we think more about it and we develop it on daily basis on we basic, create every, economy every from minute that. every yeah. second we develop yeah. something new and it, and and it drives our economy yeah the more invention you make the more money you make because people want to buy your invention so that kind of goes together yeah which is crazy man but anyway i think it's good time for us to take a you know stop this podcast and 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 carry on we need to go to this restaurant i was talking yeah. to you uh or so i, I just want to add a disclaimer here yeah but like uh i by no means am i a specialist on like any of this But what I talk is just about my own personal experience and what I uh, gained some little research on or some mm. small knowledge. But as I said, I'm not research, so don't take any of what I said for granted or for you know. Yeah, do the research yourself. Yeah. You know, like if you, you want to know something, then and you're interested, then be my guest, do your research, mm. and find out yourself. Yeah, and we might be wrong. You know, I mean, we might be miss. Maybe we yeah. just don't understand everything but we are just trying and anyway he knows a lot but still do your own research be safe is there anything you want to say before we stop this podcast well be safe don't share everything that uh, you don't want to share you don't want people to find out about you just think twice before you share it yeah and keep in mind that when a man went to a moon They took five pictures, and nowadays when we go to the toilet, we take thirty-four pictures or something. Five thousand sometimes. Yeah, so <laughs> don't take that much pictures. <laughs> hey, all right, thanks for coming, right, no, no and problem. we need to make more of these tech podcasts. I no. think I I really enjoyed this one. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.